Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're just going to be taking a quick look at the new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU, which is the highest tier laptop product NVIDIA will be offering in these early parts of 2022, superseding the older RTX 3080. This GPU presents a pretty minor refresh on the current lineup to coincide with the latest range of gaming laptops powered by Intel Alder Lake and AMD Ryzen 6000 processors. The RTX 3080 Ti laptop isn't your typical refresh though because NVIDIA have decided to create new silicon for this product, GA103. Previously, the largest die NVIDIA were using in laptops was GA104, but this new GA103 die gives us access to more processing cores without the need to go all the way up to massive GA102 silicon which would be somewhat impractical for laptop form factors. On the spec sheet, there are two main improvements to the 3080 Ti laptop over the 3080 laptop that came before it. The new Ti model packs 58 SMs, up from 48 in the 3080, which is a 21% increase and now gives us 7,424 CUDA cores. However, to fit inside similar 80 to 150 watt power limits, rated clock speeds have been dropped from a maximum of 1710 MHz boost down to just 1590 MHz, so FP32 performance hasn't increased by the full 20%. And while NVIDIA does list up to 150 watts of power available on their website, several laptop vendors will likely be offering this with up to 175 watts of power based on what we're hearing and seeing. The other main improvement is the memory speed, up from 14 gigabits per second GDDR6 to 16 gigabits per second. And NVIDIA are dropping the 8 gig configuration to only offer 16 gig with the 3080 Ti laptop. Still the same memory bus, but an increase in bandwidth and the memory speeds to match AMD's current lineup. However, unfortunately, we're still in this confusing situation where the RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU is not the same as the desktop RTX 3080 Ti card. In fact, it's not even close. The desktop model packs 80 SMs, higher boost clock speeds, and faster GDDR6 memory on a wider bus. So despite sharing the same name, it feels a bit misleading to call the laptop card a 3080 Ti when the desktop model has 38% more CUDA cores plus many other advantages. Not going to harp on this point much more, but it is just something to be aware of. The test platform for today's video was provided by XMG and their partner Uniwill. You can check out their new range of 2022 laptops via the links in the description. The GM7 AG8M 17-inch chassis we have on hand today features an Intel Core i7-12700H processor, which we just reviewed on the channel, plus 32GB of DDR5 memory in a dual-stick configuration. This sort of laptop is most likely to be used in an electronics model. The RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU is configured at 150 watts with 5 watts of dynamic boost, but just to be clear here, there are multiple configurations of the RTX 3080 Ti that will all have the same advertised name, but different power limits. An 80 watt configuration in a slimmer, smaller laptop will be significantly slower than the results we show today, which are representative of high power flagship laptops. In addition, we have quite a nice 1440p 240Hz IPS display, and I'm loving this shift towards 1440p displays for new generation laptops, as these GPUs should be good enough to handle them. For testing, we'll be benchmarking and comparing GPUs at 1080p with the display connected to the iGPU. This is the most limited configuration and is how most laptops are run in a hybrid or optimus mode. Then we also have 1440p results with the GPU connected directly to the display, which is the most GPU limited and representative of laptops with a MUX switch or external display use. We'll kick the testing off here with Watch Dogs Legion run at 1080p using ultra settings. The RTX 3080 Ti laptop is a highly capable GPU here, offering 13% higher performance than the RTX 3080 laptop test configuration we have, though at a slightly higher power usage in practice from a similar power range. But we're very much sitting in the range of mid-range to high-end desktop configurations, falling just 13% short of a desktop RTX 3080 configuration we tested earlier. This is well behind the real RTX 3080 Ti for desktops, but similar to what is possible from, say, an RTX 3070. At 1440p, the gap between the RTX 3080 and 3080 Ti laptop models close, and the gap widens to the desktop RTX 3080. The 3080 Ti for laptops is slightly faster, but it's kind of negligible at just a 4% margin to the 3080. With that said, this laptop GPU is good for over 60 FPS on average using ultra settings, which is a very playable frame rate for this sort of title. 
In Metro Exodus, we find something a bit different. Here, our RTX 3080 Ti configuration is a little behind the RTX 3080 laptop model by just a few frames, and this is despite the new Alderlec CPU being faster for gaming than previous 11th gen parts. To me, this suggests the game might be favoring frequency, and that shifting going up in CUDA cores but down in frequency versus the 3080 might be hurting here. It's also possible that given the overall power budget, which now needs to factor in higher clocked and more power consuming memory, potentially at the cost of GPU power, things just haven't quite aligned in favor of the TI model. And this isn't an outlier at 1080p, it's also the case at 1440p where Metro Exodus is still very GPU limited using ultra settings. That's a disappointing regression for the new TI model, but this wasn't the case with most other games tested. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the RTX 3080 Ti favours pretty well compared to the RTX 3080 in average frame rates, despite a small regression in 1% low numbers. The new Ti model is 10% faster at 1080p, but not really at the level of a desktop system equipped with a powerful RTX 3080 GPU. Meanwhile, at 1440p, the RTX 3080 Ti is merely matching the 3080's average performance in a laptop, making the new Ti model rather pointless. Cyberpunk 2077 is the other game we tested, where the RTX 3080 Ti laptop configuration we used was slower than our previous RTX 3080 system from MSI, despite what should be a more favorable overall platform. The difference is very small, just a few FPS in total, but I would have expected the new Ti refresh to be in the range of, say, 5-10% to faster in this very performance-intensive game. Not saying it performs badly or anything, as you can easily get over 60 FPS at 1080p using ultra settings, but comparatively, it is a bit disappointing. At 1440p, it slips a few FPS behind the RTX 3080 laptop model, though it's still enough performance to match AMD's Radeon RX 6800M in a similar power range. Unfortunately, for those wanting to buy a laptop as a desktop replacement, the new RTX 3080 Ti in Cyberpunk is 33% slower than the desktop 3080, let alone the RTX 3080 Ti. You simply can't match a 320 watt desktop GPU with just 150 watts of available power. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the RTX 3080 Ti is 7% faster in average frame rates when compared to the RTX 3080 at 1080p, so that's a small but respectable result, and not a regression like in two of the games we've looked at so far. This keeps the 3080 Ti a decent margin ahead of AMD's RX 6800M and other GPUs. Meanwhile, at 1440p, the margin between the 3080 and 3080 Ti closes to just a few FPS, which is kind of negligible. Performance is excellent here in general, offering 100 FPS at 1440p using the highest quality preset, and the margin is similar versus the desktop RTX 3080 compared to other games, which is nice to see. Some games on a laptop are going to be more CPU limited than others. Rainbow Six Siege using medium settings is one such example at 1080p, where most of the gains seen here are attributable to the new Intel 12th gen CPUs. As I expect pretty much all RTX 3080 Ti laptops to feature new generation CPUs, this is definitely a benefit to a new laptop versus a last gen model, but it may not necessarily be the GPU alone that is doing the work. For example, at 1440p in this same game, the margin between systems closes up a fair bit, and the benefit to getting the new 3080Ti model with a 12th gen CPU drops to just 5% in terms of 1% low performance, not 25% like we saw at 1080p. Another example of a CPU limitation is Hitman 3. At 1080p, these sorts of laptops can quickly run into a wall when you have a fast enough GPU. The 12700H is providing most of the huge 30% performance gains we see over the last gen RTX 3080 configuration, even beating our desktop test result for the 3080. But at 1440p, the GPU becomes much more relevant, and now the margin between the 3080 Ti and 3080 shrinks to just a few percent in favor of the new Ti model. We're still working on some new game benchmarks that we'll be using across 2022's laptop GPU comparisons, but here's a sneak preview of how the RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU fares. In Guardians of the Galaxy at 1440p, the 3080 Ti is very impressive, pushing over 120 FPS using the Ultra preset, which is highly playable on new laptop displays. In Forza Horizon 5, using the Ultra preset at 1440p, we see an average frame rate of 90 FPS, another great result that makes this GPU well suited to smooth gameplay. In Deathloop, once again using ultra settings, we see similar results, with 90 FPS highly achievable, which is more than enough for this sort of title. Then for ray tracing performance in Guardians of the Galaxy, the RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU can hit a 60 FPS average using the highest quality ray tracing settings at 1440p without using DLSS, so that's very solid levels of performance and can only go up from there should you choose to enable DLSS quality, for example. 
Far Cry 6 ray tracing is also highly playable, and the large 16GB VRAM buffer prevents any stuttering issues at 1440p, which is an issue with the RTX 3070 laptop configuration with just 8GB of memory as you can see in the chart. Overall, the RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU is a very capable GPU for gaming and was able to put up 60fps or near to 60fps in basically all of the games I tested, even at 1440p using high or ultra settings. In some games it can even do quite a bit better than that, offering a medium or high refresh rate experience without sacrificing much from visuals. So in isolation, a product like the 3080 Ti laptop is well suited to this new generation of laptops coming throughout 2022 that will be more often featuring 1440p displays, MUX switches, and a large performance gain for the CPU. However, it also doesn't seem like a very necessary or revolutionary upgrade for the laptop market. Despite being technically crowned the fastest laptop GPU you can get, it's only marginally faster than the RTX 3080 for laptops in a similar power class, around 10% better at 1080p and only 5%-ish faster at 1440p. In two of the games tested, it ended up slower than the RTX 3080 laptop configuration we tested earlier, which was disappointing to see, though I expect this is going to be an outlier and not the norm. This sort of small performance gain on average presents a difficult situation for laptop buyers. If you can find an RTX 3080 Ti laptop with a similar configuration at the same price as an older RTX 3080 laptop, no issues there at all, it makes sense to grab the newer and slightly faster model. You'll also almost certainly benefit from new platform advantages as a whole too, like an upgraded CPU and better display. But for pure gamers, I'd find it hard to recommend an RTX 3080 Ti laptop if it was more expensive than an RTX 3080 system, which usually are expensive enough as is. The performance gains just aren't there to justify paying more for the GPU alone. If a newer system was more expensive, you'd definitely want it to feature, say, a faster CPU or other benefits like more RAM or SSD space. And how important those things are to you, especially on the CPU side, may depend on whether you want to use it for just gaming or gaming and other things. With that said, these margins aren't too different to what is seen on the desktop side, where the RTX 3080 Ti is less than 10% faster than the RTX 3080, so the laptop market is also seeing the typical, very marginal gains at the high-end wallet gouging segment. But I do want to reiterate here that the RTX 3080 Ti for laptops is nowhere near as fast as the RTX 3080 Ti for desktops, and ends up 20-30% to slower than even the RTX 3080 desktop GPU in most cases. There's simply no substitute for desktop gaming power. The 3080 Ti for laptops is closest to the RTX 3070 based on our testing, which is no slouch of a card. The 3070 is very decent, it's just not at the high end of the desktop market. So anyway, that's it for this brief look at the RTX 3080 Ti for laptops. We will be back shortly with a look at the RTX 3070 Ti for laptops as well. I expect that to be perhaps more of a relevant GPU for people buying laptop sort of products. I think the 3080 class stuff tends to be far too expensive. 3070 stuff in the past has been fairly reasonable, so I'm keen to check that out. And as I said, we are currently in the process of kind of going through and updating a lot of our GPU testing for laptops. So a few things will get more GPU results in the coming weeks and everything. So yeah, everyone, thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting the channel and our independent testing, you can do so via Floatplane and Patreon. Links to those are in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.